Well, good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Medlin. I'm W5KUB, and you're watching Amateur Radio Roundtable. Tonight is Tuesday, January the 30th, and we're competing with the State of the Union address right now. So it looks like our uh, attendance is down a little bit. I tried my best to send an email to Washington to see if I could get them to move their, uh, their speech an hour or two one way or the other, but they just, they never answered me to tell you the truth. So anyway, that's where we stand tonight. But uh, if you're listening on WBCQ out there, our famous international shortwave station, WBCQ on 5130 kilohertz, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email to tom at w5kub.com. And uh, also, if you've got internet, uh, join us on the uh, web tonight. You can watch the show, you can watch the video, you can join us in the chat room uh, by just going to w5kub.com. And we'd love to have you there. Uh, for anybody that's new that's uh, in the chat room tonight, uh, I'd like to also invite you, join our Facebook group uh, up at the top, up at the top menu bar, right up there somewhere, uh, you'll see a link that says Facebook. Just click on it. Join the Ham Radio Facebook group. Uh, you'll you'll uh, be able to uh, see uh, who's been on the show, what's coming up on the show, where we're going. Post your shack pictures so uh, Katie and, and others can uh, show them on the show. And it's just a great Ham Radio, uh, great Ham Radio um, site there. See my, someone said my volume's a little low, so let me turn it up just a little bit. Turn the volume up a little bit. Maybe that will help there. Hopefully, uh, that's not too bad. Um, so one of the things we've been doing lately is I've been posting on the Facebook group um, that we're meeting on HF. We're starting to have groups on HF. And uh, a lot of our viewers here, we all get together in the afternoon, normally on 40 meters, and uh, just have a round table uh, on the air. And it's been a lot of fun. Uh, Rhea sent me a, sent me one of her cards uh, last week. Uh, that's um, into RJ Rhea. So thank you, Rhea, for the, for that. Also, uh, hey, we're supposed to have. I talked to somebody on 40 meters today, out in Oklahoma City, and uh, his name is uh, Jerry Bowles, uh, N5KYE, Oklahoma City. He's 88 years old. He's never had a computer. Um, but he asked about our show. We were talking about it today, and he asked about it. And he says, I'm going to watch the show tonight. Even if I don't have a computer, I'm going to find a way to watch the show tonight. So um, immediately he sent me, he, he called me back on uh, 40 meters and said, I'm watching the show tonight. So uh, I don't know if he's out there or not. Uh, he's he uh, he may be logged in the chat room as a guest. I, I have no idea, but uh, Jerry, if you're out there, 88 years old, that's not too old to get a computer. Man, get you a computer and watch a show every Tuesday night. At least you can do that. Um, okay, so let's see what we've got going here tonight. Um, uh, I've got some announcements to make uh, in, in a little later in the show, but right now let's uh, let's talk to. It's time this month to talk to uh, Rich Molson, uh, W2VU, the editor of CQ Magazine, and find out what's coming up next month. So, Rich, how you doing tonight, man? I'm fine, thank you. Always glad to be here, as usual. And uh, we've got uh, our annual QRP special coming up in February which uh, is always one of my favorites since I've uh, kind of become absorbed into QRP through having the special. It, uh, I know it works because it, it got me into QRP. And uh, we've got uh, some really great articles, as always, on uh, this year's QRP special, our cover story. And we've got cover right here for anybody to look at is uh, the results of the... Uh, 2017 CQ Worldwide Fox Hunting Weekend, which is the ultimate QRP. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> virtually no power at all on the hunter side and uh, very low power for the uh, hidden transmitter. And uh, so that's that's going to be our cover story this month. 
m among our more traditional QRP focused stories, we have uh, NC0B writing about uh, operating QRP on Easter Island. That was uh, quite an adventure for him. He uh, went on vacation with his wife, not as a sea expedition, but uh, took radio gear along anyway and uh, managed to get on and have a lot of fun. Um, we've got uh, a great article by W0RW, who's one of our regular QRP and pedestrian mobile contributors, on building a 10-watt rig into an old BC-221 uh, military surplus frequency meter case. Um, the uh, guts of the meter were not working, but uh, he cleaned them out and built a 10-watt uh, QRP rig into the meter case. It was a, it's a really cool thing. Uh, we've got a review by WATEE of the QRP Labs QCX5 transceiver kit. That's a 5-watt uh, QRP transceiver. And uh, as we, anybody who is active in QRP knows, QRP Labs is one of the major producers of uh, low-power radios and particularly uh, kits for people to build. And uh, we've got another project uh, from KATJU on building a remote reading RF field strength meter. Um, he uses a simple digital voltmeter module as the core of a field strength meter that you can read remotely from inside your shack so you can get a sense with your QRP rig of, is the signal getting beyond the antenna, or is it just making it to the antenna? And uh, it's uh, a very cool project. We've also got another project from N5IB, a uh, current limiter accessory for batteries or power supplies. Uh, that can be a very handy tool to have uh, if you're using batteries or, or an external power supply. You've got little radios that are very sensitive to uh, changes, fluctuations in voltage, and or current in particular, and uh, this helps protect them with uh, by limiting the current. And uh, yet another project, this is uh, a more generic one, how to use uh, copper-clad PC board material to build a project enclosure, which uh, something I may want to take a look at. I just got a, a bit X40, a very popular yeah. QRP semi-kit, and one thing that it doesn't come with is an enclosure. And I'm trying to uh, figure out the best way to uh, find, borrow, repurpose, or build one. And uh, so that's, that's you know, the real challenge with uh, a kit like that. The, the parts are already installed on the board, but uh, you got to find a case for it and you got to hook everything together. So it's a different kind of challenge than uh, just building a, a kit in the traditional way. Um, and uh, among our columns devoted to QRP, our emergency communications column this month is on QRP and MCOM and uh, on how understanding how to work QRP and set up a station in the field can be very helpful in MCOM. And of course, our QRP column is all about QRP. And uh, our QRP editor, Scott Rout, KA8SMA, is writing about the uh, Chinese Pixie transceiver kits that you can uh, have a lot of fun with for just a few dollars. Now, we usually hear some QRP-related articles from our kit building editor, K0NEB, who's uh -huh. often in the audience here. Um, but uh, this month he finishes up his uh, trip to the dark side, where he's talking about uh, building an old Heath kit amplifier. So we'll we'll let him uh, do away with that, you know, get away with it this time. For people who are not into QRP, despite all those great articles on low power, we have a bunch of other stuff too. So there's plenty of uh, material this month, even if you're not a QRP -er. Um We have an update on uh, using whisper propagation to analyze, uh, or whisper to analyze propagation on 20 and 40 meters during the solar eclipse last year. It's by K1EHZ. It's a follow-up to his initial article uh, several months ago on uh, using whisper on uh, 160 and 80 meters 
to track changes in propagation during the eclipse. Uh, we have one more project, the, uh, a simple and inexpensive power amplifier soft start protection. That goes along with uh, Joe's amplifier kit. Um, how to uh, slowly bring up the power on it so that uh, you're protecting all the relays and, and other circuits in your uh, chain as you uh, bring up your amplifier. Um, for the uh, folks who love DX history, our DX historian at Richmond, W4YO, has a piece on the Lakadive Chagos Ridge in the Indian Ocean. It's a, a line of underwater mountains that occasionally poke their heads above the surface and uh, are the home of uh, point of origin, he says, for three different DX entities. So we'll uh, let you read that and see which ones they are. And speaking of entities, one of my favorite articles to explain the difference here, um, K9ARZ has a very nice explanation on the differences between a nation, a country, and a political state. Why aren't all entities countries? Most people ex um, refer to them interchangeably. And he's explaining, well, what, what actually constitutes a country? What is a nation? What is a political state? And uh, as you see from this article, there, there are differences. I'll, and, have to, uh, I'll have to read that. I haven't thought about that, but uh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. One, one of the articles in last month's CQ mm -hmm. uh, talked about an entity that should be there. And I thought, that's a very nicely reasoned article. And then I get my QST and it says, oh, we've just added this entity. Yes. So you are prescient. You, you are seeing the future here. Well, hopefully we were influencing the future as well. Um, you know, that, that entity, of course, is Kosovo which has uh, been an independent country for 10 years as of uh, about two weeks from now. And uh, CQ has recognized it as a DX entity for its awards and contests since 2008 when it became independent. Um, and the ARRL has not for whatever reasons. There have been a few floated around as possibilities. But the bottom line was that the DXCC rules as they had been written then and as they've been written until two weeks ago uh, would not permit them to accept Kosovo as a separate DX entity. So finally, after 10 years, they figured out how to tweak the rules in order to recognize reality. And uh, I'm very glad they did that. Among other things that I'm very glad they did at the board meeting. Um, there's been a lot of issues and uh, I want to congratulate the board members for listening to the members and doing the right thing. Yeah, I just saw that announcement uh, here recently. That's, uh, that's good. Well, you know, uh, uh, keep us posted on how you do with your uh, BITX 40. Now, we've already moved on to the micro BIX. We built the BIX 40, BITX 40s, and Dave and I are building up the, uh, the micro BIX now. I think Dave's already finished his, but uh, uh, the BITX40 is a great. It, it's it's great for anybody that wants, uh, you know, to get something working there that's uh, pretty easy to, to work and it's 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 a good rig here. I'm uh, looking forward to it, and uh, in our March issue, we're going to have a uh, first look mini review of the uh, micro bit X. So uh, we're the, the magazine's keeping up on it more than I am, but well, that's, uh, that's cool. <laughs> that's good. Uh, looking forward to uh, that. Uh, that's a very popular radio in Farhan. The designer of that's uh, very popular, and we've had him on the show a few times, and he really draws big audiences. So I know that article that uh, you guys put out will uh, will really uh, it'll be read. I'm hoping so, and it's a very well written article as well, and uh, so it's. Uh give you a little sneak preview of March there. We'll also have the uh, Worldwide Ritty DX results and uh, a couple of very cool articles. Uh, one on uh, pulling power out of the DC, regular DC power out of the air from RF signals. Uh, and obviously not a whole lot, 
but uh, enough to run a small battery. So uh, it's uh, now. What? What? Was, I, mean, cool I missed what you said. What was that about pulling what out of the air? Power. You know, Tesla thought Tesla said you could do it. I was just going to. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say uh, I've been watching. Uh, I, I don't know if it's on A and E or one of the channels, Science, Science Channel maybe. Uh, every week there's a big show about Tesla and uh, how he was going to distribute that power uh, around the world with, without power lines, and they're trying to reconstruct his uh, death ray right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is uh, by a YL Ham, who is, uh, I think, 16. And she started with uh, building a uh, crystal set on uh, when she was in fourth grade or something like that, and uh, realized that it's self-powered by the radio waves, and uh, went on. Uh, I don't think she was a ham at the time. She and her dad and uh, possibly her mom also all got their licenses uh, about four or five years ago and uh, this is her latest uh, basically using uh, power from a local broadcast station to uh, keep a battery charged well you can you can do that especially if you got a broadcast station nearby there's power in the air for sure that's right so. well, well rich thank you uh, very much for uh, giving us a, a look into next month and even a peek into uh, march my pleasure, and uh, always happy to come on yeah. here and uh, chat and share what we've got coming up. Well, let me let me ask Dave if he's got anything. Dave, did uh, is there anything that uh, you want to say to Rich? No, it's just uh, been enjoying your magazine. I started uh, subscribing after uh, I saw you on this show, so it it's doing some good for your bottom line. Uh, the thing, I just finished a video today for this week. It'll go up tomorrow. And uh, it's on the subject of decibels. And uh, so I'm just perking along here and, and doing good. All right. Decibels is a fascinating subject because, you know, so many of us think of it in terms of just a measure of, of sound right. intensity. But, you know, we, you particularly up on the microwave bands and, and I guess even down in the low frequency bands, you measure power in terms of, of DBM and That's DBW. Right. Um, so it's it's a fascinating uh, area of ham radio technicals, ham radio's technical world that uh, too few of us really understand. So uh, anytime anybody's uh, helping shed light or power, on uh, the subject of decibels, it's appreciated. Well, uh, the video will be online tomorrow afternoon. Let me know if you like it. We'll look for it. All right, Rich, thank you very much. We're gonna move on. We got a couple more, uh, two or three more segments we gotta get to tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll join us anytime and for it's sure. My pleasure, we'll, and of we'll, course, uh, people can go to our website at www.cq-amateur-radio.com and do what Dave did, sign up that's, for a subscription. That's We'd right. Love to have you. That's right. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. Good night. Uh, good night. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, that was uh, Rich, uh, W2VU, the uh, editor of CQ Magazine. Hey, just a quick announcement. Boy, I got that everybody's probably heard it by now, but uh, I got uh, Ron Kramer, I got the email that he sent out uh, about Hamvention, and it looks like they're not gonna have the new big building built and ready for Hamvention 2018. They, they were hoping to have it finished, but they're running into delays on the bidding and all that, the, the county is. So uh, no new big building to replace the tents, there is going to be one new building added this year, and that's the furniture shop building, which is a, a smaller building. Uh, I, you'd have to look at a map, but it'd be next to the building we're in. We're in building, I think, uh, five or something like that. So, yeah, it'll be next door there. They say they're working on a fix for the flea market. They're going to try to keep the uh, mud away this year. They think the flea market will even be larger. So we'll just uh, have to wait and see uh, what kind of updates we get about what's going on with uh, Hamvention. But you know what? It's going to be here before you know it. And um, we're looking forward to, uh, to going up here. 
So let's uh, let's jump back over to uh, Dave and our guest on here. Uh, if I hit the right button, here we go. So hey, tonight uh, our guest tonight is going to be uh, Tony Tolbert uh, W nine AMT. And we're going to talk go boxes tonight. You know, everybody, yeah, there's one right there, boy. And it's a nice looking one there. And Tony's going to kind of tell us, uh, you know, why he built one and what it's good for. And it uh, looks like it's very functional. It's not made just to store equipment in. So, hey, no, Tony. Not. So, Tony, how you doing up there? Now, you're up in Indianapolis. I understand you're out in the garage. and It's a little cool out there tonight. Yeah, it's a little cool out in the garage tonight. Uh, the wife, uh, she kicked me out in the garage tonight with all the ham radio stuff. So uh, it's a little cool up here in Indiana tonight. Oh, wow. Well, hey, let's talk go boxes. And uh, I found, you know, there's a, a, a Facebook group on Facebook about go boxes. And everybody has all different kind of designs and, and ideas. Talk to us some about uh, what you've got there and why you did it and um, what a person okay. could use it for. Give us sure. some ideas. Yeah, so I um, I entertained the idea of putting a go box together a couple of years ago um, just because I wanted to get out and pers- participate with Field Day, you know, kind of on my own. Um, so I started doing a little research online. Uh, kind of looking at the different go boxes that people had had, people had built. And I found a few comprehensive uh, videos on YouTube from a couple of gentlemen that um, built something very similar to what I have, kind of a step-by-step process on what they did, the equipment that they purchased to put their go boxes together. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had uh, HF capability. I wanted to make sure that I had a uh, two meter 440 capability. So I started doing a little research on what radios to buy, kind of how to configure them. And this this box here is uh, about iteration number six. Um, it took quite a few different uh, times to get everything to fit right, where everything needs to be sitting, uh, get everything cabled correctly. Uh, I don't I didn't want a rat's nest behind theirs because I wanted it, you know, manageable if I needed to work on things that I could. So, um, like I said, this is about iteration number six. So as far as this go box is concerned, I have uh, an HF radio, which is a FT-857D. I have uh, a two meter, 440 uh, dual meter, uh, watt meter to monitor my power. Uh, LDG tuner for my HF rig, my power supply, 35 amp power supply. Um, I have the LDG meter to complement the 857D just because of a nice big readout, you know, a nice analog meter that you can see when you're operating portable. Uh, I've got a 220 rig, and then I've got a DMR rig here as well. Uh, My power distribution, and that's pretty much it for this. I've got uh, a battery uh, charger in the back. I've got some power distribution, some power pole uh, distribution power in the back. Um, And... um, I've got some quick connects on the back for my antennas as well. Man, it sounds like, run, sound like you got everything antennas. covered. Sound like you got everything covered yeah. from HF up through uh, 450, including two, 220. Yeah, HF through 450. So um, we've got portable antennas. We, I run a, uh, a J-Pole uh, made by a company here in Indiana called N9TAX. He makes a little foldable J-Pole antennas out of twin lead uh, ladder line. Uh, so those are nice and portable. They store in the back of the go box really well. Uh, and then I use an Alpha uh, uh, 160 through 10 uh, easy setup on their tripod system, one of their new antennas that they've got this year. Uh, I use that for HF. It'll tune 160, but it works really well from about 80 all the way up to uh, all the way up to 10 meters. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, really good. Now, tell us about the box you got that thing in. That's not a, just a simple metal box is it no it's actually a um, it's what they call a road case uh it's designed for uh, audio video audio video gear um generally you see those in uh kind of that industry and uh it's uh what they call six u six ru or six u uh so it's six rack units tall um and um i think we may go another iteration on this i do want to get one that has wheels just because this thing weighs about 50 pounds and it's uh, it's a lot to lug around 
Um, so I'll probably get a case that has wheels on it, maybe within the next year or so. Um, and uh, it'll have a handle on it, so it'll make it a little, a little bit more portable. I mean, this thing, like I said, it weighs about 50 pounds as it is. It has a, a deep cycle uh, a battery in the back also, so if I do lose power, I can use... Uh, I can use the HF in a QRP fashion for uh, for a low power off that battery for about a, a couple of hours. Okay. Now you you also uh, sent me some pictures. I guess these are uh, maybe some different configurations and maybe some of the accessories that go with it. You want to talk sure. about talk about some of the pictures? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, just talk to us. What do we got here? Yeah. So the three coils you see on the bottom of that picture, those are the J pole. Uh, antennas that are made out of ladder line, uh, all PL259 connectors. And then I have some little hooks there that we can hang those from, you know, a tree branch or, uh, you know, a pole or what have you. Um, the uh, upper right there, the, the power of that is uh, I can use also use battery power to power this. Uh, if I want to uh, use those alligator clips, I can clip onto a 12 volt source. No go box is complete without a good extension cord. So that's what you see right there in the middle. And then off to the left, you see a Unidap kit. Anytime I take my GoBox anywhere, I always keep a Unidap kit with me just, uh, you know, for operating, whether it be a portable, if I need to put a portable on an antenna or oh, yeah. uh, adapt to kind of an antenna, I always keep that that uh, Unidap kit with me as well. And that's the little kit of connectors there that uh, can all kind of screw together and you got different combinations. Yeah. You can make any kind of combination you want there. Yeah, yep. universal uh, RF adapter kit all the way from, uh, you know, SMA to TNC to BNC, end connectors, PL259, just about everything you'd need. Uh -huh. Are those on the market so people can get those? Yeah, that's a readily available yeah. kit. If you do a, a Google search for Unidap, U-N-I-D-A-P-T, um, there are several different companies that make those. In fact, I think I picked this one up at Hamvention uh, a few years ago. In fact, uh, in, in fact, I've got one right here. Let me show you. There, here we go. It's called. Uh, there yeah, you go. That's the same kit that I've got. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's um, they're part, and you just screw them together. You make any combination you want, and all this stuff hooks together, and uh, it's just cool. Yeah, I think they're. Usually price range from, uh, you know, 89 to $109, depending on what uh, variations. I think I've got the middle of the road kit. They, they sell them any, anything from mild to wild. I, I've got one, uh, one of their kits at work that's got about 200 pieces in it, and uh, it was a couple hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're seeing your antennas. What do we got here? Uh, so that again, that's the main uh, radio go box. Bottom right hand corner is the HF rig, the 857D. Uh, I've got the signal link USB right next to that. If I did want to run it digital mode, FT8, JT65. Uh, right above that's the big LDG meter that complements the, uh, the 857D with the LDG tuner on top of the, the radio. And then again, off to the left there, that's a, a TYT uh, 220 radio. Works really good. Uh, right below that's the main power supply, 35 amp switching. Uh, it's got um, uh, it's variable voltage. It's got uh, a USB lighter. Or it's, I'm sorry, it's got a lighter socket on the front of it too. So if I need to charge my cell phone, I can do that. Um, the big twin meter Comet, uh, two meter, 440 HF meters. Nice big backlit meters. Uh, if you're running at night, uh, they've got some nice backlight behind those. And then off to the left there is a a Connect Systems uh, CS800 uh, DMR radio. Um, in case you hadn't noticed, my shirt says Hoosier DMR. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm pretty big in the uh, in the DMR uh, technology out here in Indiana. And then right above there at the very top, that's the uh, the power distro. Um, I've got some pullout lights there, and then a nice LED uh, readout tells me what my power is if I uh, want to monitor that. So that's kind of a power conditioner to it. Uh, sure. Kind of smooths out all the AC. Uh, for me. Um, next picture you see there, that's our top, That's so that's a, a two-rack unit case, uh, and that is a portable repeater. That is a DMR uh, repeater, Motorola SLR 5700, all self-contained in a two-rack unit uh, case. Uh, behind the, the top power distribution there is the, the, uh, the duplexer, 
Uh, we've got some networking gear. Um, with the GoBox, I take a, uh, uh, a Verizon uh, hotspot with me everywhere we go. So we've got internet no matter where we're at, uh, provided that the internet stays up. Um, so while this is all fun and games, um, you know, one of the big things about a Go Kit is that you've got a portable station if you lose power, if there's a natural disaster, or if there's, you know, in, in, in need of that, that communications line, that you've got a portable station that you can take wherever you need to go and, and deploy that uh, at the drop of a hat if you need to. Um, so while it's all fun and games to play with it on, you know, field day or winter field day that we just had this past weekend, um, a lot of guys build these kits for that primary purpose to be able to serve as a line of communication when, uh, well, like the saying goes, when all else fails. Now, do you uh, do you operate those rigs daily, or are they just in that box uh, for an emergency? I try to get it out about once a month. Um, in the winter months, not so much. But, you know, when we have a little bit warmer weather here up in Indiana, uh-huh. um, I try to get it out about once a month, uh, make sure the batteries are charged, get the rigs up, get them fired up, make sure they stay uh, in some sort of an operational use because it would be a lot of uh, it'd be a lot of waste to just have it sit in a box and only use it once. Oh a yeah, year. inexpensive too. <laughs> Very yeah. expensive. Uh, kind of the rear view there of both boxes, as you can see, I the radio box. I've got my uh, my power pole distribution. Um, you can see the deep cycle battery there off to the left. Uh, the top box, you can see the back of that repeater. Um, you can see the the networking uh, the router that we've got there that picks up our Wi-Fi signal for our uh, for our network DMR repeater. Um, I've got an internal light that makes it really nice uh, when it's dark out. If I need to make some adjustments or take a cable out or uh, move a power cable around or what have you, um, I've got that on a switch. And then my battery is also on a switch. And then my my three PL two fifty nines there at the top um, for my quick connections for my antennas. Kind of a close up there of the of the power pole distribution. Mm-hmm. And then there's the back of the uh, the repeater. You can see the mobile duplexer. Most of the time, it stays on the dummy load. Um, I can I have a uh, a portable antenna for a 440 that we we take with us to ham fests and uh, or we take to field day and we can deploy that as well. Uh, so now, does the back come off? Does does this these boxes have a front and a back that attach? Yeah, they actually they have fronts and backs that uh, once they're once they're all enclosed, you uh, you know it doesn't expose the equipment at all. Yeah. Provides a little bit of storage. Okay. How how big is the battery? Yeah, a close up that in there. The, uh, I'm sorry. How big is the battery? How many amp hours is that battery? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Uh, let me look real quick. It is, uh, 12 amp hour. 12 amp hours. Yeah, 12 amp hour. Okay. So that's where a lot of the weight comes from. It's, it's not a, uh, uh, a lithium polymer. Uh, it's, it's a, uh, Oh, let me see here. Well, and you know that's uh, that's just to get you going uh, real fast in an emergency, and I'm sure uh, you would yeah. connect to a much larger battery or or a generator. Yeah, exactly like yeah. exactly like that one. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's see uh, where were we? Uh, we've looked at the repeater, and uh, here, I guess there's the front. You you got digital. You got a, a USB signal link in here. Yep, we've got a signal link USB that we can connect to uh, to a computer if we need to to run uh, to run digital modes if we want to run FT8 or JT65, what have you. LDG tuner that'll match just about any kind of piece of wire you can throw out. That's true. Yeah. I, I've I've had numerous tuners, and I, I swear by LDG and, and and their products. They make a very good tuner. Uh huh. Yeah, and there's our power supply, 35 amp uh, surge, 33 amp continuous. Like I said, it's got the the cigarette lighter socket if I need to charge a cell phone, uh, and it's got some some uh, clip connectors on the front if we want to want to run an accessory, 12 volt accessory off of that. Uh huh. And there's our 220 radio and our DMR. 
a UHF radio. I think I got the same uh, 220 radio. You know, there's not a lot of 220 manufacturers out there. You know what? I mean, a lot of people don't like the Chinese radios, but that, that little 220 rig, that's a good little radio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And here we go. Yeah, there's our front of the repeater. I don't have the repeater powered up right now because it uh, the fans in the front of it, it, it sounds kind of like a, a hand dryer. So. All, right. <laughs> All right. And uh, this looks like this could be important. Yeah, that's our main HF antenna. That's uh, my, by a company called Alpha Antenna. He's out in uh, Missouri. And uh, they make all their products here in the United States. And uh, it's uh, a foldable um, vertical that's resonant um, right at about 20 meters. But like I said, it'll tune uh, all the way up to uh, 10 down to 1, or excuse me, down to, it'll, it'll tune 160, but... Uh, it's not very effect, effective and efficient on 160, but it, it does work well on 80 all the way up to about 10. Uh, knife folds nice up in that, that uh, cloth bag, and uh, you throw it over your shoulder, and uh, you're good to go. It takes about five minutes to set it up. Well, I've got a couple more pictures. Let me throw them in here. They're not yours, but they're uh, Glenn Popeil. He's in our chat room. Uh, sure. uh, Glenn's a friend of ours and the author of... Uh, the ARRL books uh, about Arduino and me uh, 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 mesh networks, but uh, here's uh, here's Glenn sitting in his go box. Yeah, there it is. It looks like he's got a looks like he's got a six RU box as well. So, uh huh. So where where do is. you get these boxes? Uh, Sweetwater Sound um, is where I bought mine from along with the uh, the shelving units uh, but uh, any audio video <coughs> distributor uh, would sell those mine is made by um, oh okay gator it's a it's a gator oh. brand um, there are probably a dozen different brands they all look the same um, yeah it's a very nice setup he's got there so kind of pretty similar to what I've got yeah just, yeah. You know, arranged in a little dif different configuration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's a couple of different uh, go boxes. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people are building these. I, I know uh, in the uh, Facebook groups, uh, many, many people are building the go boxes. And uh, everybody has kind of different ideas, but you guys are sharing the, the ideas and, and helping each other out there. Yeah. Well, and... and a go box is nice to have, but an even, an even nicer nice to have is your portable generator that you've got there. So um, I've got two of those that uh, that we take with us when we when we run portable operations. So we are 100 um, percent off the grid when we run this thing. And you've got the little Hondas back there that's very quiet. Yes, very 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 quiet. Oh yeah, man! Wow. I've got a, I've got a couple you of run the generator with the inverter. Um, I've heard some people say that if you're operating HF because of the variable load, that the uh, generator will start hunting, trying to find uh, the right speed. So you have to put you it know, on it, the. It, it, it has it has two yeah it has two speeds on it. Um, I usually just leave it on uh, normal, so it's not looking for that constant load all the time i just run it at high it's not very loud um so i just run it on high all the time okay you know and some of those generators actually have uh, uh, uh cables with plugs where you actually parallel the generators uh, have, do you guys do that yeah I've, I've got two of these units and i've got the uh, the cable kit that'll parallel them together so uh when we go to dayton we bring both of them with us yeah at our booth and we've got them plugged up that way Wow. Okay, man. Hey, this is a uh, it's great uh, uh, information that uh, you you passed on to us about these go boxes. Now I need to go build me one. Dave, what about you? You, you think we need to build one? <laughs> Probably. Um, do you have an inverter there to get 110 from your 12? Um. Yeah. So that's that's what. The uh, the uh, Alenco power supply down there at the bottom that's that's 110 and it turns everything into 12 volts. Okay, uh, how about I, the other way? Can you turn your 12 into 110? I can't turn my 12 into 110. Okay, so that's why that's why we carry the generators with us. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Tony, uh, thanks so much. It's been very interesting, uh, and you did a great job building that yes, go box. It's a pleasure, and thanks, for, thanks yeah. for letting me join. Man, uh, it's it's a beautiful go box there, and uh, you've uh, you. you've done a great job on it. All right. Well, uh, the show's going to be recorded, and uh, you guys can watch it later. So if anybody wants to watch about the Go, go Box uh, segment, they can tune in um, on our channel and watch it later. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions, they can get a hold of me. Um, my call sign, W9AMT at Comcast.net. Feel free to reach out. I've got some some plans and some pictures and, and a few videos of, of the, kind of the building process that I went through with this. Well, all right. Uh, okay, thank you very much. We're going to move on to Hamcation down in uh, Orlando. It's coming up next, okay? Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Let's see if I can bring the Hamcation guys in here. We'll work on that. Let's see. Just take me a second to run them down. And while we're waiting on him, uh, everybody just stand by. We'll take a quick break here. Happy New Year's from ICOM. Start out the new year with a bang with one of ICOM's new available products. Communications have never been so much fun. The new ICOM IC7610 is a direct sampling software defined radio that will change the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. It has RF direct sampling system, 110 dB RMDR, independent dual receiver, and a dual digit select. A new D-Star communication device is here. The ID31A Plus is easy to operate and is available in silver, red, or gold. It provides worldwide digital communications. You can share pictures and text messages, and it's IPX7 waterproof, compact, lightweight, and tough. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM radios. All right, we're trying to get uh, trying to get uh, Michael, general chairman of uh, Ham, come on here. Hold on just a second, everybody. We we had him, but we had no picture. I think we're going to get him this time. <clears throat> you there, Tom? I'm here. So how you doing, Michael? I'm good. Okay. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and drop off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop off uh, Tony. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a little confused here with all the cameras I got going. Save me three, Tony. Save me three. All right. So I think we're okay now. Yeah, we're uh, we're we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Okay, guys. So, hey, you know, uh, each year we uh, we bring in Ham Cation from uh, Orlando to talk about this uh, very big and uh, nice uh, uh, ham fest down in Orlando. And uh, tonight we have Michael Cawley, uh W4MCA, and he's the general chairman this year. I think the last couple of years, <clears throat> last couple of years, Peter uh, has been the chairman, and uh, I think his wife is Liddy. But I, you know, I think they moved back. According to uh, according to Mike here, they moved back to uh, the Netherlands. So I don't know if he's watching tonight. He'll probably have to catch the show uh, recorded. So Mike, uh, how you doing tonight? I'm doing good, Tom. Thank you very much for having me on the show, and. Uh Yes, it was Peter Myers. He was a previous chairman for the last uh, nine years. Uh, so I got a lot of uh, or big shoes to fill right now, uh, trying to make the show even better and uh, than it is now. 
Well, I know you guys will be successful. It's always a, a great show that you uh, you have down there. And uh, tell us a little about it. Uh, you're the chairman this year. How, how did you get elected into that job? Um, I don't know if it was elected or uh, railroaded, but uh, we'll say elected. Um, actually, the last couple of years, I've been uh, shadowing uh, Peter. So I knew it was kind of coming. And... Um, the OARC president asked me if I would uh, officially do it once Peter uh, retired, so I said yes. Okay. Well, did, did Peter just just because he has nothing to do now? Is that the reason he went back to uh, the Netherlands? Uh, no, it, it was planned at some point they were going to move back over there just uh, because of the cost of living and all. Uh, a few things are cheaper over there for him than being over here in the states. Yeah. I've uh, made a lot of trips into the Netherlands in my work, and it's a beautiful country over there. So, give us a little background, if you can, about uh, Hamcation. Now, how many people do you, uh, you guys uh, typically have, and where they come from? Um, Hamcation, this is actually our 72nd uh, show. Uh, we draw right a little over 19,000 um, visitors over three days. We are the second largest in the United States, uh, the third largest in the world. Uh, and you are, and it's very nice. I've been down there once or twice. I haven't been in, down there in the last few years, but uh, uh, Kathy and I are going to have to get back down here one year. Maybe next year we can make it. Maybe next year we'll do a web webcast from there. So, uh, hey, let's look at some pictures that you, that, that you sent me. Uh, that shows some of the group there and also just what it looks like if you happen to attend. So uh, here's a shot here. These look like a bunch of happy people. Who are they? Yeah, that's actually part of our ARL officials that come. Uh, this year we're going to have uh, Rick Roderick, president of ARL, coming, and they're actually going to have a uh, ARL expanded presence this year. So they're going to actually bring the ARL store uh, down to sell some stuff and have some other items uh, so they're going to have a bigger presence. Well, I tell you, I, 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 I'm not sure the size there. I know up at uh, Hamvention, boy, they, they're they large. They they take a lot of space. If they do that down there at uh, with you guys at Hamcation, you're going to need another building. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, not quite as much space, but this year they're going to uh, have probably around, I think it's... 12 booths. Well, that's, uh, that's good. All right. This is actually our main exhibit hall. Uh, this is where all the commercial vendors are. This is actually Friday morning, right after the show opened. Okay. And and this you have both inside and outside. Just wanted people to know that. Yeah. Uh, Again, this year, we draw a lot of uh, emergency vehicles. One of them is the MCOM vehicle uh, from ICOM. Uh, it will be there again next year or this year. That's cool. Is that, I think that's Emmett there, maybe, W0QH. Um, yeah, I think it might be him and uh, Mike Lee, I believe. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I think uh, Emmett now is, uh, the, is, is keeping it and driving it around, I think. I think Mike uh, uh, had to go overseas or something. Oh, let's see. Uh, here we go. Here's a nice uh, picture outside, and and it's sunny too. The weather looks good. Yeah, uh, last year it got up in uh, close to 80, uh, so we had good weather. This is actually the area uh, in between the buildings where we set up all the emergency vehicles that come in, communication vehicles. So we have ve vehicles from Bavard County, uh, Deers, Disney. Emergency Amateur Radio Service has a vehicle also that come in. So we usually get about seven or eight emergency vehicles. All right. Now, so is this a permanent structure? Uh, no, it is not. It's actually what's called a uh, inflatable building. It is uh, donated by a state medical response team. Uh, this is actually where we do our forms at because we are limited on space. So they donate these to us for the weekend and we set them up and they can hold right around 60 people in them to do the forms. Okay. This is a photo of outside. We draw uh, 
lots of RVers. This is part of our RV tailgate area. Again, I'm looking at the weather. It looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually on Wednesday morning before the show opens. This is all the or part of the almost 200 RVers that we get uh, to the show. So they're all lined up out there. Now, what time will you open the gate and let them come in? Um, usually we try to get them in started usually about 10 o'clock uh, once we get everything set up on uh, Wednesday morning. Uh-huh. And you have uh, uh, all the facilities for them to set up and hook up? Uh... C correct. Uh, we have, last year we had almost a little, right around 200 RVs, and they all have uh, at least 30 amp hookups uh, with water also at each spot. Okay. This is a photo of our um, outdoor tailgate area. Uh, we draw almost uh, 250 tailgate spots per year. This photo is actually our what we called swaps, which is uh, more like an indoor tailgate. Uh, people sell more of the used stuff in here, so good place to come and try to uh, bargain uh, for some cheaper radios. So how does a person, if they, if, they want to, if they want to be a flea market vendor and they've got used equipment, uh, what's the difference? Uh, what, what do they have to go through if they're outside or if they want to get inside this building? How does that work? Um, you know, if they pretty want, much it, yeah. the, the, the difference is outside is a 20 by 20 space that they get. Uh, inside, if they would like to come inside, they can uh, come inside this building and uh, rent a single table is how this one goes. Uh, okay, so they have much more space outside. Uh, correct, yeah. because people outside usually, because they bring trailers yeah. or um, vans and stuff like that. So, yeah, you get a lot more space outside in the spot. Right. Oh, boy. They're, they're, yeah, either wait, they're waiting on something, food or the bathroom, I'm guessing. <laughs> Uh, probably both. Uh, actually, this is on Saturday morning. Uh, this is everybody that's already got their tickets waiting for the gates to open. Oh, wow. There they are again. Yeah, this is another photo of them. So they're uh, patiently waiting for that 9 o'clock to come around so we can uh, open the gates. And we actually have two entrances like this. This is just a photo of one of them. So mm -hmm. there's one on the other side of the building also. So I guess you have on-site parking where all these people park out there and then they just walk to the main gate? Uh, correct. We're able to uh, park everybody on-site, uh, free parking. You do not have to pay. And we do have golf carts to help get people around also uh, that's not able to walk. So that's, that's good. This is another photo of our uh, outdoor tailgate area, a uh, very large area. There's lots of room to move around, so uh, the tailgaters ain't so crowded together, so you can actually move around out there. Yeah, I noticed you got a lot of space between one side and the other. Now, are people allowed to drive in and out, in and out of that area during the show? Uh, no, during the show, we try to limit all uh, motor vehicle movement inside. Uh, one reason why we do keep it wide, we can get emergency vehicles in and out uh, very easily if we have to. Yeah, there's a question in a chat room. Do you uh, have uh, a ham radio license exams there? Uh, we do. We actually put on ARL uh, exams on Friday uh, afternoon, then two exams actually on Saturday. Well, you're really spread out. It looks like you go for miles and miles in different directions. Yeah, yeah, it's a large area. That's what's uh, kind of nice about it. So everybody don't have to be so tight together. Uh, this is another photo of more of the RV tailgaters along the road here. They park their RV and able to just set up right there and people just walk by and buy their stuff. Wow, so this is a quite a spread out area here. If you want to see it all, you can spend a couple of days walking around. Uh, correct, you can. Yeah. Very easily. Wow. Uh, well, and what's the, what's the dates of the uh, ham, uh, the ham fest? It, 
It's uh, February 9th, 10th, and 11th. In fact, I think I can pull your site. Let me see if I can get your site up here on the show. There we go. Uh, that's your website, uh, hamcation.com. And I'm sure that uh, and it says also a host of the uh, 2018 ARL Florida State Convention. So I guess a person can do everything they need, need to do on the site here. Buy tickets, get information. Uh, correct. There, everything's on the site, all the information. Uh, we have hotels that we partner with to give special rates. Um, also this year, uh, our uh, door prizes or our grand prizes uh, we're giving away a 7100 ICOM on Saturday. Then we're giving away a nice uh, 7610 on Sunday. Uh huh. That's good. Uh, nice prizes. Uh, and also, also, just real quick, uh, we will have a 7610 uh, courtesy of ICOM set up at as our special event station at the show so people can actually go and uh, play with the radio for a hands-on demonstration of it. Yeah, is that, is that 7610? Is that a new radio? I mean, new uh, That's model? the brand new one just come out from ICOM. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Hey, Dave, uh, you ever been down there? Well, I was in Florida in the Air Force, but that was sure a long time ago. Well, but um, hey, 70, 72 years. I mean, you hadn't been that long, man. <laughs> you know? Now, I uh, would love to come to one of these. I've got enough um, frequent flyer miles on United that I can get one more ticket left over from when I worked. And um, so it's going to be either Dayton or. or uh, Hamcation, one of the two. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Both of them are great uh, ham, ham fest, I, I can tell you. And these guys down at Hamcation, are, uh, uh, they're uh, first class. I, I, I know that from dealing with them every year. I, I was there a year or two, uh, about seven or eight years ago. But uh, I just don't remember it being that big. But I, I do remember walking a lot. But uh, I wish I, I, I'm going to get back down there maybe next year. Yeah, back back when the last time you were there, we probably weren't that big, because uh, I remember I've been in it about ten years now, and when I first started, we were right around ten thousand visitors over the three days. So uh, with uh, Peter and Liddy taking it over and running it so well, they did uh, almost double our attendance in a matter of ten years. Yeah, let me tell you a funny story. Maybe you can relate to this or, or know the building. I guess it's still there. Uh, I was walking around there at, at Hamcation, and the bathrooms, if I'm not mistaken, the bathrooms were like a little building, and you have a door kind of on each side there. And, you know, I just walked in walked in the door into the bathroom, and I noticed it just, you know, was open, and I walked straight across, and I walked out the other door. And I looked back, and one was a men's and one was a women's. Uh, do, do you, do you, uh, is the bathroom still like that? <laughs> they actually are, yes. Oh, man. I was uh, a little embarrassed. Uh, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't know if I was going to get arrested or if anybody saw me. But I think I went in a women's door. But but after you get inside there, you can kind of walk across and out the men's side. So uh, it's kind of uh, it's, it's kind of a uh, common area there, I guess, for a while. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. Well, look. Hey, I'm glad you uh, came on the show tonight, uh, Mike, and. Uh, if there's anything that comes up and you guys need to get on here and make an announcement or anything, we'll be glad to do that for you before uh, uh, before the show uh, happens. Sounds so, sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much for allowing me to come on the show, and uh, I look forward to being on in here uh, more often, actually. Yeah, and I would love to have you. Up, oh, wrong name. There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, We'd love to have you guys on here more often. Maybe you can uh, uh, bring some interesting subjects to our, our show, and uh, you're always welcome there. And this is uh, Mike uh, Cawley, General Chairman of uh, Hamcom, W4MCA. Mike, uh, thank you. Hamcation, what did I say? Hamcom? Yeah, it's Hamcation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> too, too much ham in all of them. Yeah, there is. There really is. So, uh, again, thanks a lot, and uh, we uh, enjoyed the uh, update, and hopefully uh, people come down here and visit you guys. All right. Thank you, Tom. All right. Save me three. 
All right, so let's see. Well, Dave, uh, <clears throat> that's most of the things we had scheduled tonight. I've got just a couple little things going here. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be building uh, a, a new antenna uh, for 40 meters and above, and that's the uh, extended double ZEP, which is two five-eighths wavelengths on each side. Uh, I'm gonna be starting that probably next week. And let's see if I got a picture of that right here. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, maybe I don't. I, I, I didn't bring it in here, but you know, I took down a ballon to, uh, this week that uh, I, I had on my uh, Delta loop out here. And I wanna show you what the ballon looks like after about five or six years. So here, here it is. Has it got a wasp's net inside? No, no wasp's nest. But it had something else. All right, guys, I just took a uh, four to one ballon down off my delta loop today. Thought I was having some trouble. You can see it's kind of corroded on the end here. And I noticed it sounds like it has water in it. Uh, not sure who made it, but uh, this is one of the typical ballons you might buy on, uh, you know, from a, a hand store. We're gonna throw a hole in it and see if we can get any water out of it. There's no seat holes in it. Supposed to put that visor on your yeah, head, not yeah. to... Well, what I'm doing here is fairly safe. Okay. Here we go. All right, so we got a hole in the bottom. Let's see if any water comes Watch out. Watch this. Looks like we got some water in there. Oh, yuck. You needed a drain hole at the bottom. Yeah. You can see we've got a little... As they call them, weep holes. Yeah. water in there. That was probably around the coax connector. Who knows? It's still dripping. What we'll probably do is... I'll probably cut this open and let's uh, just take a look at the insides and uh, we'll see if it's been damaged inside. But uh, I've had this up probably... I don't know, five, six, eight years, probably. So it needed to be replaced. It replaced it with one of the uh, Ballon Designs uh, four to one. All right, guys. So you uh, you saw what I found there. Uh, I've been using it Ballon on my uh, uh, my uh, forty meter Delta loop out there. The Delta loop antenna has been working very, very nicely. Uh, and I've got me a new uh, AL80 amplifier, normally running about a kilowatt on it. And, and you know, that water might have played a role. I had a water-cooled ballon out there that uh, <laughs> probably uh, probably helped. Yeah, it, 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 the antenna was starting to act up, and uh, actually I found that it was actually the coax that connected that down to my main coax run. Uh, mm -hmm. Some squirrels had uh, eaten through half the uh, cable. Oh. Uh, and and I, I replaced that, and then the, the water the water ballon uh, started working okay, but I had already uh, ordered me some new ones, and I, I bought me some from uh, uh, Ballon Designs, and if you go to ballondesigns.com, uh -huh. you'll see them. These things are very he very heavy made, three thousand watt, five thousand watt. They've got very uh, heavy. Uh, 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 ferrite uh, toroids uh, inside and they're both uh, not only the, the, the matching or the balanced unbalanced but they also include uh, an isolation uh, uh, section in there so these are really good they're heavy duty if you look at those uh, if you look at the uh, eye bolts there you'll see they're really heavy duty eye bolts uh, if you go back to this one that I've had up for so many years those eye bolts are really small, and uh, the plating has come off of a couple of them. And of course, water got in it. There was no seep hole at the, at the bottom. And uh, so I, Walter's going to come down maybe in the next uh, couple of days. And the next uh, next show, we, we're going to cut this thing open and see what's inside this four to one. I'm, I'm sure it's just an air core winding. Uh, but I want to see if it's been arced over. I want to see if it's been on fire. I want to see what it looks like inside there. 
Um, the end was a little, uh, you know, Emmett showed us last week. You got to check this stuff. Um, I failed to check it, so you can see it has a little corrosion on it there. Um, I'm not sure who made this, but it's one of the typical ones that you would buy uh, out, you know, on the uh, on the web there. And, you know, just uh, a couple more things. Uh, hey, guys, um, I've got a lot of 100-foot trees in the yard, and uh, this is what I used to use all the time, and uh, it broke this week. Uh, the last time I shot it, it, it went over fine, and I laid it down on the concrete, and it broke. So I, it, wasn't, it wasn't the pressure that broke it. Uh, it was probably because I, I carried it around with a long pipe there, and it probably just uh, made it a, you know, a weak spot and probably cracked it there. When I laid it down, it cracked. So what I've done this week, I've gone ahead and, and built me a new one. Uh, it's got a, a lot larger uh, air um, a tank on it. Uh, so to hold a lot more air, probably can use a lot less pressure right now. So that's it. You can see the little, uh, the little projectiles we shoot there made out of three quarter inch uh, uh, PVC pipe. And uh, these suckers, they'll go, they'll go, you know, uh, easily, uh, you know, with 40 pounds of air, they'll easily go over a hundred foot tree and 200 foot down range if, uh, you know, if you want it to go that far. And then the last thing, final thing, I found in the shop. This is going to go in the uh, Amateur Radio Roundtable uh, Museum or Hall of Fame. This was the original helmet cam that we started with 17 years ago to broadcast the Dayton Hamvention. Oh, and, my. and you can see there, I mean, we had to carry a laptop around under our arms there. And uh, well, there it is right there. Now, the problem we had was that back 17 years ago, the Internet was pretty poor, especially your remote connectivity. Cameras were very poor. So the picture was never just really great. Plus, we never knew where it was aimed at. And every time we turn our head, it was making people seasick out there. So. We, we decided that this wasn't the best way to do it, but this is a start. This, you can see the dirt's on it. This is, this is the original. We're putting it in a museum, and uh, who knows? We might bring it up to Dayton this year and uh, 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 kind of put it on display. You know, maybe I'll get a glass, one of these glass basketball cases, and just put that. I've got one of those. And maybe just put that down in there and, and, and uh, take it to Dayton with us. So... That's kind of kind of what we uh, what we've been doing this week, uh, guys. Um, yeah, Glenn Popel there says he remembers seeing us walk around uh, with that helmet on, and uh, again, it was it was pretty bad. Well, Dave, what you got anything else going this week? What what what's happening? I'm I'm gonna try to make an extra video, so I'll have I'll be a week ahead. I was a week ahead, then when I left in December for vacation, I used up my week ahead, so now I'm, you know, just making them barely just in time. i got to get ahead a little bit, so I'm going to find a few things. I think, you know, this radio just showed up in the mail today, um, actually FedEx on our porch, and I think this will make a great video right here. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's going to be a cool video to watch there. So let us know when you get it out there and get it uh, uh, get it ready there. All right. Well, you know what? It's uh, 912. I think we're going to – I'm going to go ahead. This is, this is going to be an early night for the, the official show. And uh, we're going to go ahead and bring up Hangout. A lot of people like to get in Hangout, but sometimes we go so long that that these guys on the East Coast can't, uh, you know, can't stay. they got to go to bed. I don't know. I don't know what why why they can't step a little later, but so let me uh, let me bring our hangout and uh, and then let we can let up to ten people join us on the show, guys. This is the informal part of the show. We talk about everything. I mean everything okay. over here, you know. And I'm going to need to drop here, so okay. Good to see you again. We'll see you next week. All right, Dave. We'll see you. Seventy three. All right. So uh, let's see if we can bring hangout up real quick. And see if anybody is out there. 
just got to click uh, two or three buttons here, and we'll we'll be on here. And we'll be on here before you can spell Saskatchewan backwards. Uh, will somebody put the Hangout uh, in the chat room, please? Because I'm the first person in a Hangout. Nobody's there. We need the uh, link. The link is up in the topic of the chat room. There's a link up here. If uh, somebody, will, hey, how you doing? If somebody will post the link for us, let's see if I can get it here. I can meet you. I think I got the link. Let's see, copy and paste. There we go. Uh, all you gotta do is uh, click on that link, and you can join us on the show. There, we've already got Douglas in there. We got Jerry in there. We need a few more. <laughs> they, they, we need to get a national standard time. Jerry, I have not seen you in a long time. Let me get the camera over on you guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, that'll work right there. Let's yeah, see. I'm here, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you in here in a long time, man. Where you been hiding? I'm all over the place, man. Are you? Work, work, work. The job had me busy, so I couldn't really come on. Yeah. I'm here tonight, so. Well, cool. Glad to have you, man. Oh, let's see. We got a few more coming in there. We got uh, Jeffrey in there. You know, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. I hate to I hate to say this. I, I, I hate to say this, but if you guys look at Jeffrey's picture down here, he kind of looks like James uh, Comney to me. I thought maybe that was James Comney that, uh, uh, you know, checked in with us. But no, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, Jeffrey up in New Jersey. Who else we got in here? We got Lester? I, I don't know. Lester. Come in, Lester. Lester's got his mic muted. Maybe, uh, maybe Lester will unmute his mic and say hello. Hey, Bill. There's, uh, there's Lester. Hello. Hello. Hey. Well, how, you, time, we'll see. how you doing up here? All right. Well, oh, Lord. Look who's here. Who's here? Who's here? Jerry's here. Oh, yeah. I, I was <laughs> talking about He's here, man. Jerry. Haven't seen him. Haven't seen him in a month well, or something. All right, so who we got? We've got Bill. I guess that's Bill. Well, we got two Bills. We got Bill. We got Lester, Jerry, Jeffrey, Douglas. All right. All right, guys. Well, hey, next week, next week we already have a good show. We're gonna have Martin on here. I'm oh, trying to. That's the other Bill. I'm find. I'm trying to find uh, some kind of a uh, good topic for Martin to talk about, and uh, we're also going to have Riley. Riley's going to be with us next week to answer FCC questions, and Riley's going to give us a little talk. Uh, maybe he can. Uh, maybe he can convince those guys that keep telling us to move on uh, on 40 meters that they got a net there, uh, or, 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 you know, they've been talking on that frequency for 40 years every day at this time, and they they want their frequency. Maybe maybe we'll get Riley to talk about that. Well, guys, last uh, last week I had a cable that went bad uh, on the mixer here, right at the time we brought up Hangout. That's why we weren't able to uh, talk to you guys. I don't, I don't know how it uh, it worked during the whole show and it just went out on Hangout. Yeah, I got a question for Douglas. For Douglas, okay. Uh, the, headset he's, the headset he's using, I'm trying to figure out what kind of headset it is. Man, that's a that's a space. Uh, you know, I, that, he's got that infrared eye on there. For he got all this stuff and the antennas and I mean, you know, I mean, he looks like uh, he's uh, from some sci-fi movie. Doug, Douglas. Douglas. 
Tell us, Douglas, tell us about your uh, your uh, headset. Well, we're not hearing you, Douglas. Uh, your mic, your mic must not be plugged. Your headset mic must not be plugged in. Nope, nope, not hearing you. No audio. Yeah, check your uh, your your mic may be mute. Well, it says it's not muted, so uh, apparently it's not connected, or he didn't have the right mic selected. Mark P. says, it must have been a hot show last week. Yeah, it melted the cable, actually, here. Can't believe Mark P. is uh, chatting in the chat room, but he's not uh, He's not joining us in the uh, Hangout. Okay, so uh, William, you're saying we have we got some audio issues with our uh, on our uh, hangout? Our uh, we, is that me or you, Tom? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm hearing you. You sound a little scratchy. Let me see what somebody else sounds like. Uh, no, nothing, still nothing, You hear us? We're not hearing you. Yeah, you you, you do sound a little funny there. Uh, Audio issues on oh. Hangout oh. and on Skype. No, Everybody man, sounds come. like they're in a tin can again. Well, you know what? It's probably because I replaced that cable with uh, that that really went bad last week, and it probably has something to do. It probably has something to do with you know tip ring and the way it's getting mixed. It does sound it does sound kind of bad. I can't hear you, Tom. Oh. Uh, Let me uh, let me try something here. Hang on. <coughs> All right, test one, two. Test, 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 test. One, two, three, four. Let me turn it down a little. That cable might sound better right there. Can you guys hear me? Can Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Really soft. Really soft. All right, hang on. Can you hear me now? Can, can you hear me now? No? Hmm. Time. Okay. You're fine uh, out of the stream, but not in here. Yeah, okay. Oh, now you're fine in here. You, you're hearing me now. You're a little teeny. Yeah. It's that it's that cable. Uh, what it's doing is, let's see. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going into both tip and ring or what. Uh, I know it's showing up stereo. Let's see. Say say something, Bill. Testing one, two, three, four. Yeah, you're showing up stereo uh, on the encoder here. So I don't know. I must have some type of mismatch or something. Yeah, yeah it's the same off. thing. I went listening on the uh, regular broadcast. You sound okay over there. When you come over here, you're. And I think it's on the internet. No, uh, I, no, no, it's it's, it's uh it's in the mixer and in the. In the I'm I'm coming somewhere. out. I'm coming out of Hangout and Skype with one of those little oh. USB uh, little, little <coughs> USB audio converters, and then the little one eighth inch uh, stereo oh. jack from there. Are you running that stereo or are you monoing that? Oh, uh, it's stereo. I mean, it's, sh it, it's showing when you talk, it's, you know, at one time we only had one channel working, but uh, right now it's yeah. showing both channels. 
Well, it just sounds like it's being smushed down to like uh, eight bit encoding. Yeah, let me turn. Let me see something. That yeah, make that, that make down. any that make any difference there? Of course. Is it on? It's pro. It's probably not you hearing me. The trouble is me hearing you clearly. Right. Yeah. It's the output from yeah. that little yeah. sound car to Wirecast. Yeah. I might swap that sound card out and um, just try a different cable. And again, I'm I'm converting from a little eighth inch uh, stereo plugs to a quarter inch plug. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I change cables. If you got a spare USB adapter, swap that out. Otherwise, start looking at Wirecast. Maybe it's doing something to the input on that. No, I mean, I'm I'm hearing you now. I'm hearing you without. It's not even going through Wirecast. Uh, uh, so it's just being bridged in the uh, yeah in your mixer yeah board. I, yeah. I can hear you without it going to Wirecast. I mean, I, you, well, you're then, going you're going yeah, over to Wirecast. The mixer board that yeah, way. yeah. Let me try something. Let's see. Well, all these connectors are the same, I know. Yeah, I saw you trying to connect there. Yeah. Yeah, it's what go together, but uh, there's so much stuff going on here. What is that? Oh, oh it's just a. Uh, this one was a What's that, Tom? What are you holding on? Ah, okay. This one was a little adapters. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got a drawer full of that stuff. Don't <laughs> we all? Yeah. Did you just swap that out? Yeah, I did, but I don't. I'm, I'm sure that's not the issue. I, I originally had a cable that was working. It seemed like it was working fine. It was a, uh, <coughs> it was stereo on one end, but I had it. I had the cable modified to where I only used two conductor at the other end, and yeah. I, I used that for a long time. But. Uh, Obviously, it wasn't working very well, and I noticed we noticed it wasn't stereo. So, uh, by these are the ones were just close to me enough, and close enough to pick up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I figured out. I'll play with it, and I'm hearing a little, a lot of rumble on you guys right now. Yeah, that's. I think that's something going on there. That may be. That's, want, that may. That, you know what? I, I think it. it uh, I think it rumbling is me. Let's see. Well, at least the problem is just with the uh, hangout here for you, because when you do the, the show, that it's your Well, no, I, actually, actually, the Skype was using the very same audio channel and everything. Yeah, same the cable. Skype sounded just as bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully it wasn't so bad that uh, everybody just... And then, see, Bill, no, William, no, 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 William, William has this ear... I was there looking at the guy from Hamcation there, you know, yeah. smothering a uh, Heil microphone, and he sounded like he was talking into a tin can. Yeah, well, I saw you guys talking about that, about blaming blaming Bob for the mic. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you scare poor Bob. Like, hey, look, yeah. there's your PR40. <laughs> you know, let well, me... Who's going to Hamcation? Is anyone in the room? What was that? Who's going to Hamcation? Anyone? That's uh, too far for me. Yeah, I, I'm not going. Yeah, I haven't made my mind up yet. I, I, if I can find a hotel room, I might go. I was in Miami this weekend uh, for a business trip, and just thinking, like, you know what? It's so easy to fly from Philadelphia to, to Florida. I might want to get up. Yeah, I yeah at work I used oh, yeah, to get to Tampa pretty easy. Yeah, at, at work I was down in Miami. Whenever I'd want to go, I just I'd just fly down. But yeah, it's a pretty good drive from Miami up to Orlando. You got to go around that lake, man. That lake must be eight hundred miles well, wide. I got tons of work to do, Tom. I'll catch okay. you during the week. To help All right, man. That. All right, we'll see you. All right, take care. Yeah, that uh, that lake up uh, that lake uh, Ocho Moby or whatever it is, that sucker must be oh, about that thing must be about eight hundred miles wide. You got to go around it. Oh, yeah. Switching over to myself. All right, we're hearing you now, Douglas. Let's see who else we got. Somebody else joined us. Let's see who we got there. We got Brian joined us. We got hey, good Brian. There, Tom. How you doing, Brian? Doing all right. Trying to stay warm up here in Indiana. Yeah, okay, well, it's starting to get cool down here in Tennessee again. Yeah, we had a warm spell for just a couple of days. Yep. 
Well, I, I I see Lester. I think it's Lester. Yeah, I see a Lester in there. I don't know who that is. I uh, Lester, if you hear us, say hello. Well, guys, I'm gonna hang out, uh, check out, whatever. Gotta go. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. We'll talk. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you later. Save me Good three. Night, Save me three. All right. Love the show, and uh, you guys are great. All of you. <clears throat> All right. Well, guys, uh, I, I, if you ever, I, I don't know if uh, you guys were on during the, home during the day, but um, we've been getting on 40 meters in the afternoon, posting it on our Facebook group, and we'll get 10 or 15 of the group on here just about every afternoon and and uh, talk. Uh, Met a uh, met a guy on here t uh, today, uh, uh, Jerry Balls, uh, N5 KYE from Oklahoma City. He said, he said, man, he said, I'm 88 years old. I never had a computer. Uh, I, I, you know, I can't watch you. And then I said, well, Jerry, we're gonna put you on the show tonight. I'm gonna announce this. And he said, and he called me right back and says, I'm watch, I'm watching tonight. So let me see. Let me put. Uh, Put the little ticker across the top in case Jerry is watching right now. Oh, let's see. I don't see if Walter's still in here. I think Walter's already gone. I'm going to get Walter down here this week and uh, we'll uh, start working on putting that antenna up. How's everybody? There you go, Tom. Yeah, it's here in the real, real old one. Oh, what is that? CR-366-1951 uh, receiver. Okay. Receiver. Okay, cool. Cool. I like it. Only about 700 of them was made. Uh, me and one other guy looked for last six, seven years, and we've only found about 12 of them. Oh, yeah. Well, there are a few out there, but, man, find them. But you know what? Nowadays, it's easier to find stuff. You, t you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, without the Internet, you, you, you can never find that stuff. So if it's out there, you can find it now. Oh, yeah, the Internet. It's been a blessing and a curse. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Jerry, uh, W8RQM is asking what frequency and what time. You know, hey, Jerry, we just post on the Facebook group we're getting on right now. Uh, get on and join us or be square, and we'll post the frequency and everybody starts showing up. So, just follow the Facebook group and uh, you'll see the, uh, you'll see when we get on. So Jerry W uh, W eight RQEM Jerry is that the Jerry that's in the uh, hangout right now? J Jerry Jerry in hangout. I forgot Jerry's call. Hello Jerry, I don't, I don't hear you Jerry. Is anybody hearing me? I hear you just fine, Tom. Okay. I don't know what's going on. I see Jerry there, but uh, someone in the chat room named Jerry <laughs> asked a question. I don't know if it's the same Jerry or not. Okay. To go, for the guy that wanted to know the snow, how much snow we got, Marquette, I just posted a picture on Facebook of our snow, snow pile here. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jerry says he's not on Facebook. Okay, well, Jerry, uh, you just have to kind of watch for us. Uh, we'll uh, bring it in the. I know how to. If I know how to bring a picture in the in the year, I would. But. Um, I think you do some kind of share uh, up there somewhere. Let's see. Hey, I hadn't done it in a while. Up at the top. Uh, yeah, it's on, it's on Yeah, up at the top. See the three little dots, top right. You can do a share screen and you can do that see the little three dots at the top up there by the uh, cog wheel and the little man uh, top right 
I got Internet Explorer open here. Well, at, at the top right, you should have your settings. The little plus man, a settings and three dots. You don't see it up there at the top left on, on your screen. Oh, okay, it's right on the screen. I see where it came. Yeah, right click on three dots. three dots, and you can do a share screen. <coughs> click on the share screen. Yeah. And then that'll bring your should be you should be able to bring your picture up. Of course, nothing's happening yet. Hey, hello. Hello. How you doing, Mark? Yeah, I'm bringing that up, but I'm not. Uh, where the... did, did it not come up, Mike, when you did a share screen? No, yeah, I got something else came up. It's busy. Playing on all my... Okay. not bringing up my desktop. It's on my desktop. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, Mike, uh, Mike, uh, now, now I'm seeing your password now, Mike, and your bank account information. Yeah. I mean, that's 7,300, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. Can hear me better? It's, you know, I'm again, as you can see, I'm just bringing up this blank here. Yeah. All right, so Douglas is on his cell phone now. He thinks he has yeah, internet so. problems. Yeah, I was going to say Jerry, uh, W-A-R-Q-M, uh, uh, he says he's not on Facebook. So I try to keep the, uh, the, the, the contacts up in the general portion of the band by, by keeping in a general. That way everybody can, you know, join. So we're usually up around the 70, um, what, in the 7170, 7180s. All right, here. I think today we were on 7188. So we're going to be down in here somewhere. Uh, you, if you just tune around, you'll probably you what, you'll hear us. Well, a lot better than 75 meters at well, night. 75 has been horrible. Yeah, he, I haven't tried hey, 75 in a while. Do what? Do do what, Mike? Hey, Mike, I saw something. You there? Mike left. I think he just dropped out. Yeah, I think he did. Yep. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, I was on 75 last night, but 75 meters was going really long out to the West Coast last night. Yeah, I checked internet on 75 the other night, and I, I, I had to talk to a guy out in California, and that control out that way. It, it was long to the uh, west for sure. Yeah, okay, that didn't work. I, I saw one time I saw a picture. Of you look, I think it was you with a baseball cap on or something, and then uh, and then you went away. Yeah, everything I saw was blank, black. Oh, okay, I don't, I'm not sure how that works. All right. Well, guys, what time is it? Nine thirty-six. I, I think I'm gonna call it call it quits for the night, and um, I'll work on this audio before next week. <laughs> And uh, got well, some... it's 10.36 here. It's still nice and early. Yeah. Ten, ten, you guys can stay on hangout if you want to and uh, continue to talk here. Uh, yeah, 9.36 where you're at, Tom. Yeah. It, it's supper time for me, man. I had any supper. I'm, I'm hungry. Oh, yeah. Supper time was 6 o'clock. That's about, well, hey, down here in the south, supper time is 5 o'clock. We, it we have breakfast. We have breakfast when we get up. We have dinner at twelve, and we have supper at five. Yeah, you ready to go to sleep then? Yeah, man. And I have I have snacks in I between. Sound like my you know? grandma's house, Tom. What, what was that? That sound like my grandma's house. Supper times at five. Yeah, that's right. That's right, man. That's the way I I, I grew up, man. Breakfast, breakfast, dinner, and supper. You know, it was very amazing. This morning I was watching the one TV station. They were doing live video from driving the freeways because we had all that snow last night. We had five inches. Some areas up to seven. Huh. They were out driving around. They drove right through town here about two miles from me. And I got a sneak peek of the roads, what they looked like this morning. Even though I don't get up there early to drive anywhere. 
Well, this morning, this morning at five o'clock, my uh, my my telephone goes, and this is a special announcement being uh, given out. And then, of course, he didn't say anything else. So I finally picked my phone up and looked, and uh, they told us that uh, there were going to be snow flurries in the area. When I got up, I didn't see anything. Snow they flurries. <laughs> See, they gotta warm warn us when we have snow flurries, man. Yeah. You know, they, I they, wish they could drag that dog on picture in here. Yeah, they gotta wake us up, man. When snow flurries are coming, boy, I don't care if it's four o'clock in the morning. You better send an alert out and wake everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't get anything at this end. Well, let me see if I can figure out how to share something here. I haven't done it on Hangout, of course, I've never had to. But I'm okay. I hear I'm on share screen. Here we go. Share screen. All right. Okay. Are you guys seeing that? There you go. Huh? There you go. It's sharing. Are you seeing that? That pops up, and then you just yeah. uh, your entire screen, or yeah, you your your entire desktop. You see? Uh, yeah. So that's how you do it. Let's see. Hmm. Cancel. Error, sorry, an error occurred when share. Uh oh, now you did it. Uh, yeah, well, well, it, it kind of worked. Yeah. What do you get? Yeah, I rearranged my shack. And oh yeah, share. Now screen. I gotta go back oh, there and hook all the stuff back up. Huh. Now you might see the screen now. That was that. Mm. There we go. I got somebody. Somebody's screen. Who's that? It's more one. <laughs> Who's that? Never mind, but it looks like a whole bunch of them. Well, you're probably seeing come, you're seeing come back what I'm sending. Uh, 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 I'm probably messing it up. Let me. Yeah, you got a lot let, of let me get off here. I'm off of it now. Uh, now you'll see better what what's on there. All right. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, one guy said, "You don't play with it. You ain't gonna break it." Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh man, I just looked out the man. I I I just looked out the window. I just looked out. You're not gonna believe it. All the discs. I just looked out the window. You're not gonna believe it, man. You got 12 inches of snow. <laughs> Look at that, man. Already. It's getting it's getting deep out there. It's getting deep. Now, don't you let me let me go to our studio C. Let me go down to studio C. There we go. Oh, that's much better right there. Oh yeah, that oh, looks like Nassau, Bahamas. Yeah, man. Every now and then, you know, um, let's see. Yeah, every now and then we have a few few things go wrong in here, so I had to kind of, you know, kind of, yeah. kind of, kind of, you know, wave fan hey, that, that out right there. That looks like what they have up in uh, at Kennywood with. Uh, uh, steel, uh, no, 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 I'll say good night to everybody from hey, New York. Tom, do you send it right to YouTube and have it record there and then you just go back and have to trim it? Yeah, I go back and, uh, yeah, YouTube records it. I go back and I trim off the first 30 minutes of music. Uh, so that way that when people go to look at the, the recorded shows, the, you know, if they get 30 minutes of music, they won't know what's going on. So I always right, cut, right. I, I always trim the music off. Uh, at the beginning. Well, you go up to where you start to do the actual thing. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll well, go in there. Send it right to them, and then you just go and edit there. I'll online do that. I'll do that. Yeah, they got an online that's editing. That's they got that's online that's editing there. I just, I just bring up the YouTube and then just uh, stretch the cursor out right there and just uh, uh, delete the first thirty minutes and right. you know that. Okay. I'm gone. Set, I'm gone. Done. Set me three, guys. Set me three. I'll talk to yep, you. Three, sir, Tom. Okay. I'll, well, if you want to see it, I post it in Facebook anyway. I'll Can't talk to you later. I'll see the QST. 
Uh, you guys stay on talk if you want to. I'm out of here. We'll see you next week. Next week, ought to be good with Mark on and with Riley on. It's going to be good. And what? Are, hey, what's uh, what's Brian got there? What's he working on? Oh, yeah, Tom. Um, I am. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I am I playing got, with an SDR play. I got one of those. I love this old thing. <laughs> I got this one. Thing, this thing is cool. I'll, I'll tell you what, this, this is bread, bread yeah. and sliced bread. Yeah, I've got, uh, I got, I got one. This is one he Cool. That's uh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, too bad you had to I, have it on a cute on a computer. A cool little piece for a receiver. Uh huh. All right. I'm uh I'm out of here. Good night to everybody. Yep. We'll okay. see you guys later. So right, you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks.